do Muslim women need feminism? So I was first confronted with this question when um, a person anonymously posted on our my school's confession page um, saying, let me quote them, if wearing hijab is not an act of sub submission, but only an act of faith between the woman and God, then how come I don't see men wearing the hijab? If both genders do not undergo the same constraints, then there cannot be equality. I see the hijab as another way to shame women for their appearance and their responsibility in case of assault. Bruh. <laughs> this was obviously a personal attack. I mean, because there were only two women wearing the hijab on campus and I was one of them. And at that moment when I saw that post, I felt like my beliefs, my ideals in advancing women's rights was being dismissed by this some white person, I don't know. And this person was implying to me, it seems like they were implying that Muslim women cannot be feminist and that Muslim women are oppressed because they follow a religion that forces them to cover up. But this is the problem with Western liberal feminism. They think there is a one-size-fits-all form of feminism and that if you do not adhere to it, then you are stigmatized as being anti-women's rights. Well, a lot of Muslim, Muslim women scholar would argue against this and say that um, that's absolutely not true, that Islam has always championed women's rights. In fact, one of the goals during the foundation of Islam is about saving women from the Jahiliya society who used to bury girl, female babies when they were born and uplift women to a higher position than before. So in Islam, women have the right to work, they have the right to property, and mothers are given a high priority to the father. And in the Quran, repeatedly, God has stressed out that men and women are equal. And let me just quote one of the verses in the Quran. Um, the Our Lord responded to them, I never failed to reward any worker among you for any work you do. Be you male or female, you are equal to one another. This is just one example. There are many other verses in the Quran that God will always says, we always say like men and women, men and women, like just stressing out the fact that to him, men and women are equal. So it is clear that Islam is a religion that champion women's rights. So some scholars would, some um, Muslim scholars would therefore argue that since Islam, a religion that was established in the 7th century for a, very, for a very long time has fought for women, then why should we even need feminism? Why do we need a label to start um, um, for something that we have done for a very long time? Why feminism? Because feminism is a recent movement, it's a recent label. It came about in, 18 of, or in the 19th century. So, do Muslim women actually need the label feminist? Um, here is what I would argue. While Islam is indeed, I believe that it's a religion that does champion for women's right, our modern society has advanced up to the point that the patriarchal system is so deeply ingrained that we need to become more specific in our fight against this systemic, systemic gender inequality. So, for example, Islam says that um, women have the right to work. But what kind of work? Can women become prime minister? If probably the answer would probably, probably be yes, then why don't we see more women in this kind of jobs? Right? So the feminism, the feminism that I advocate here isn't one that puts women against men. But feminism that I advocate, that I advocate is a fight against a system of power domination that favors a minority of people from a particular gender and continues to seclude and discriminate against the rest of the population. So I'm going to show you an example of how gender inequality is so ingrained in the functioning of our society or in the system that we are in right now. So I'm going to take a reading from John Acker. She did um, an analysis of job requirements in big corporations, the criteria for a job 
is gender neutral. Unless explicitly stated, jobs criteria would not say like, oh, um, I want the secretary to be male or female. But the thing is, John Acker said that jobs are very much gendered. And it's gendered in a way that it favors the male group. For example, a lot of companies would prefer an employee who is committed, like fully committed to the job, or they want an employee that um, is mobile, can move from one place to another. But women have commitment outside of their jobs. For women to be completely um, committed to the job, it will require them to abandon domestic work that they have at home. They need to abandon childcare. Or for example, if they want to apply for a job that requires them to move to another place, they have to think about if they have kids, what about their, the, their kids who go to a particular school? So these are the kind of things that um, prevents women from entering into the job market. And it's very implicit and you just don't see it. But the thing is a lot of, even a lot of things in our society is very much gendered. And these are the kind of systemic gender discrimination that feminism should be fighting against. I do notice that a lot of people, a lot of in the Muslim community itself, that um, there is a huge stigmatization of the word feminism. Therefore, people tend to reject feminism, the ideology, because they tend to conflate it and confuse it with the Western liberal sense of feminism, the very constricting one which I personally think is completely justified. I think this type of feminism is a form of cultural imperialism that continues to, to subordinate women from the global South as the other, as the group of people who needs liberation from their prison of culture and religion, that we need to save this Muslim woman, uh, <laughs> this kind of stuff. But again, this is not what feminism is and what it should be. So. Um, going back to the, to the question, do Muslim women need to be feminists? So for me, regardless of the label that you choose to put on yourself or not to put on yourself, it's very clear that, clear that there is a problem of gender inequality that is very much ingrained in our political, economic and social structures and that we need to do something about it. It's 2021, we need to do something about it. <laughs> I think just simply recognizing that this problem exists is a good start. So on behalf of me and Arif France, I just want to say happy International Women's Day 